sheet here. So talk about a couple things. One, we have all the colors, all of them. Now, the fact that we have 61 colors is simply because we had picket fence in our very first launch. And so now that I've kind of explained how I choose colors, now you know why Bundled Sage was just left out of a set because as I was choosing my... It was it. It was the last color picked. I just went in and I'm like, okay, I'm going to pick a green. And then when I was all done with the sets, I'm like, well, I guess it's Bundled Sage. It was nothing personal. It's just that I really wanted a white crayon in the first set. And technically the Distress palette is 60 colors plus white and three metallics. We just don't, we just talk in, in those kind of terms. So when we had our crayons in packs of six, it's like, yeah, well, how are we going to do it when we get to the end? I'm like, well, here's a crayon. Like, if you, if you want that missing color, here it is. Um, but these are the colors that are in the last three sets. But the overall set is good. But you can see that, you know, we've got a whole nother bold. We've got Barn Door, Ripe Persimmon, Pine Needles, Faded Jeans, Desi Concord, Love Brush Corduroy. We've got another light palette, great pastels, tattered rose and scattered straw, shabby shutters, weathered wood. This one, I want to roll around in this one. Like, mm, yeah. seriously? An ice spruce, waiting this long for an ice spruce crayon. What was I thinking? and gathered twigs and wild honey. Like this set, I cannot wait for Christmas. That's fun. Yeah. Really, I cannot wait for a little forest moss, aged mahogany going on. Nice woodland Christmas. So it's exciting. You don't have to wait anymore because now they're they're all here. So there's cool things that we can do with distressed crayons. I'll take you through the basics and then uh, give you some ideas and we'll show you that technique with the crazing. So what these are, these are a water reactive pigment. Now, definitely encourage you to go check out Dina's demo on her new scribble sticks. Totally different, so different, and I think in our creative environment, you need to see your options because I always tell people, what do I buy? Buy what you're going to use. Buy the medium that really speaks to the way you craft. And for Dina, she wanted something that would work on paint and all of that. And for me, I wanted this really rich pigment, but I wanted kind of that versatility of getting it wet and moving it around. I wanted it to work with my inks. That's really what that was. So these have the consistency of a lipstick. If you haven't used them before, they're very creamy. So it does allow you to smudge them fairly quickly to kind of blend them out. It's also going to allow you that if you put this onto a surface, we can go in and wet them. Now when we wet them, they really don't do anything until you do something to them. And that was important because if I was doing something mixed media and I had a layer of crayon on my surface and I wanted to blend out some of it and I wet it, I don't want the whole thing to go nuts. I don't want it to go crazy. I just want the ability that if I wet this, I can go in and move that color how I want. So you can use it with, move it with your finger, a brush, anything. So when I say water reactive, they are, but you have to move them. And it's because of that, you cannot stamp with them, right? Sometimes people are used to taking a stamp, coloring it, spraying it with water. Well, if you spray it with water and you touch it, you've not moved it. So the only way to get the color off the stamp would be to actually drag the stamp down your paper. <laughs> Not what we're going for usually, um, but that is why. Again, a feature of Dina's. You know, hers are designed for stamping. One thing I you can stamp. Do is yeah. I put it on the mat and wet it, and, and pick then it up. stamp. It's a good idea. Yeah. Just to get like texture. Exactly. You can totally take that and make your ink pad on there and kind of build it up because you get a little nuggety color, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I like that. Yeah. See, you like texture. Like All right, so that's kind of the basic premise, but when we work on different surfaces, that's where the crayons really start to do things that I cannot achieve with ink. So what we've done here is taken some surfaces, and I have some already prepped because I learned uh, last CHA that no one wants to watch gesso or texture paste dry. It just doesn't lend for good crowd control, all right? But I'm like, we're gonna put this on, and it's gonna take about 15 minutes to dry, and nobody wants to do that, okay. So I already have some that are kind of pre-pasted, pre-done. So what I've done here, this is texture paste. So this is texture paste done through a stencil, dry. And then this has gone with Distress Collage Medium. This one is crazing. Now you can't see crazing yet. You'll see it when it dries. And what crazing does is it actually creates these tiny little crazing. Almost looks like crackle, but it has no texture to it. <laughs> My beautiful friend. It has no texture to it at all. Um, it's completely smooth and I and I love the effect that it gives because when we work with color it looks like eggshells it's really cool and you expect it to be textural and it isn't other than the paste so that's what we've done texture paste collage medium collage medium when you put it on a surface is waterproof when it dries so once I have this on I have now sealed my surface 
So instead of my color absorbing into the surface, it's going to give me a lot more movement, a lot more play. So let's take some colors and we're just going to go in and we're going to scribble these on. Now I like to leave my crayons open when I use them. I find it much easier to play that way. All right, I'm just going to add some color to start. And then I'm just going to go with my finger and I'm start moving this around. Now if you want to blend your color, you can take that same finger and just kind of go into that area and see how I can mix the color. But if you want to move another color, change your blending. Right? <laughs> yeah. Otherwise it's just going to be a mess. It is. You know, you can't take one, yeah, you can't just take one magic finger and massage. Yeah. And eventually you'll run out and you have to just take a baby wipe and clean them off. And, yeah. But crayon wipes right off, which is good. But that's important because if you take one finger and just kind of like do that magic motion, it, it doesn't work too well. Now these we have the ability to mix our colors and layer them. Now I'm working out of the new tin. This is the new crayon tin. Very exciting. We can fit. Now these will fit up to 36 crayons, but because we have 61, I suggest <laughs> splitting these up. I like to have a little breathing room because it makes it easier to find a color instead of having it overloaded. I also size these to fit the storage jars, so if you check out the samples, you'll see that I like to use them uh, with storage jars too. Okay, so here I'm just going to add a little bit of color there. Let's go in with something bright. Oh, let's throw in some twisted citron too. Let's throw in some green there. Now I'm working in a section at a time, and I'll show you why in just a second. I'm going to pull in some of that color, just kind of move that around. Now we know that pink and green make brown. Yeah, now see, that is a great color name right there. Yeah. So I am kind of switching my finger, going back to that pink a little bit. I love that I can put pink over blue, right? These crayons, because they are a pigment, gives me the ability to layer. If I decide even that I want to put yellow over the top of it, I can do that. I can add a color over the top and not worry about contaminating anything, not the crayon, and certainly uh, not the surface. It'll just go right over the top of it. Now, once I have some color on here, here's a couple of things to keep in mind. These crayons have a drying time. That's what makes it very different than an oil pastel, meaning this surface is going to be dry, so I can't move it. So if I were to add those lines of color everywhere and try to go back and smudge it, it wouldn't happen. But let's say you forgot. Because, well, we're crafters, we're excited. We want to do something else and then you totally forget. So I'm gonna add some color here. I'll add some color here. And we'll put more of this color here because it's good and a little bit more here. Let's just go in and blend this, okay? Just because I'll, oh, look at that. That's so good. All right, let's do this. And let's do this. I'm running out. <laughs> and then you do this, yeah. Because you would, yeah. Yeah, you're like, what do I do? Yeah, okay. So let's say we had a color and, I don't know, we, we were gonna go in and blend blue and we forgot to blend blue. I'll let it dry for a second. Watch crayon dry. It's, it's the new now. Now, this year, we're watching crayon dry people. Um, but let's say that happens, because it can happen. Maybe you're blending an area and you totally forget that you didn't blend a section and you say, oh, I'm gonna go back and blend. And you try to blend and that doesn't want to blend, okay? These crayons react with each other. So all you have to do is apply more crayon. It could be the same color or a different color, but if you put crayon on crayon, it's going to totally re-wet and remove that existing crayon. So don't freak out. If you get something that's not blending, just add more crayon. Same color, different color, and that's going to move it right out of the way. So once we have that, there's a couple of things that we can do to this. Now this one had a really great kind of a vintage vibe, because what I did is took a brown Distress Crayon. Could be any color brown. And color your finger. A great way to apply Distress Crayons is using your finger. It's almost like creating um, a distressing wax. Even though these have no wax in them, this I can go over metal, I go over uh, plaquettes, any embellishments, just by coloring with my fingers. So here, I can now rub over this stenciled image, and that's what's giving it that vintage tone. You can see those roses taking on that vintage tone without adding crayon direct to the surface, okay? That's one way. Now, another way that I can do this, if I didn't want to use the crayon, I could use white. Or I can just go in with a damp finger. Same thing, right? My finger on a baby wipe, what's that gonna do? That's gonna remove the color from that area. Pretty cool, right? Because we know the only way to get rid of this color is to move it. So spraying this with water would do nothing, but going over this with baby wipe, 
I can bring this all the way down to the original surface if I want and leave my color underneath. I know. It's so good. Oh, oh, totally water. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just too lazy to do that. Shame. <laughs> wet, wet. It could be a baby wipe. It could be your finger. I just think that if you dipped it in water, you may end up with too much water. So I just want it lightly damp so I can only hit the surface. Yeah. But I mean, there's, and then again, you could color over it if you didn't want to. So that to me is like, when you see that texture and you look at those little crackles, like imagine that on a box or a picture frame or any type of foundation or surface, that's what makes it unique. And this one is completely dry. So, uh, feel o vision Feel, feels waxy. Feel this, smoothie. So distressed crayons, that's how you know. If it's smooth, it's completely dry. If it's waxy, it's not completely dry. So it doesn't mean it's gonna move, it just means that it's not totally dry. So when these dry, they have no, no wax to them because they don't contain it. But a lot of times when people are using it, they're like, it's kind of feel a little sticky. I'm like, wait for them to dry and they will be smooth as ink. But this one, even though it's completely dry and smooth, if I wanted to go back and I wanted to remove that color, it will always be reactive. Always be reactive. And that's what makes it super interesting. A great way to uh, work with stencils. Now I will point out, just because we've been doing this video and we talked briefly about distressed microglaze, it does not work on crayons. Absolutely not. You put distressed microglaze on crayons, you are back to the tag. It's just something in it, just it's gone. It takes it right off. So avoid that. Pretty cool. Any questions on that? Thanks for watching. Be sure to give our video a thumbs up and subscribe to Scrap Time videos on YouTube to be the first to see all our videos from Creativation.